Hi everyone, welcome to Cancer Healing Journey Talks. Myself Sonali Modi from Community Outreach Team of Zenonco.io and Love Heals Cancer. We guide cancer patients on adopting an integrative oncology treatment approach. We help them find the balance between medical treatment and complementary treatment approaches. We help our patients with our team of oncologists, lab experts, nutritionists, and other healthcare professionals so that we can improve the treatment outcome for patients. We also help in connecting patients with other cancer warriors who have gone through this journey to address their queries. And we also share inspirational journeys to motivate cancer warriors who are going through this journey currently. So firstly, I would like to introduce you to today's speaker, Miss Dennis Patmeri Reddy. She's a cancer warrior. I'm happy that you're here with us today to share your story. So Dennis, please tell me something about yourself. Okay, um, my name is Denise Patmari Reddy. I live in South Africa. I'm a married woman, I'm 56 years old. I have two kids, uh, adult kids. My daughter Santana is 34 years old and I have a son by the name of Ashton Kalen Reddy and he's 32, he's a married man now. And I became a grandmother last year. And it's amazing because I never knew how what the love for another child is besides yeah. your own. But yes, I'm very, very happy to be a grandmother. I'm very happy to meet you here today. It's an amazing opportunity. And thank you so, so much for allowing me to share my story with you and uh, your colleagues. Yeah. So uh, like what made you go for the diagnosis and what were the initial symptoms? Okay. In 2019, um, at, uh, it was September. So actually it started in August where I had a slight flu. So flu symptoms lasted for two months. And I couldn't understand why is it so persistent that the flu is not stopping. It's continuing every day and it seems to be getting worse. So I went to doctor and he said, no, it's just the flu. Don't worry, just take the antibiotics. You'll be fine. And um, it was, my son got married in September, 2019, where I already started feeling sick during the time of his, the preparation of his wedding. And during that time, I was also writing exams for a course at work that I was doing. So it was a lot of stress during September, 2019, with regards to the exams, the wedding, and also not feeling good. Um, so I started bringing up a lot of foam and I couldn't understand what is this all about. And uh, September, I still continued having the flu. And, uh, and the 29th of September, I woke up about three o'clock in the morning and this is with a sharp pain across my left breast. Mm. And I went to the bathroom and I felt it, you know, I started examining myself and I felt, no, but this is a lump on my breast and I don't understand where did it come from because it was something that happened overnight. Nevertheless, I uh, couldn't, um, understand why, you know, why is this lump from coming? Get me quick, can't you? Yeah. So anyway, I um, went to uh, the doctor the next morning and the next day I went to work and I spoke to my colleagues at work and explaining them that this is the story. And they told me to please go and check it out. Uh, two days later, I went to uh, a doctor, a radiologist, and he did uh, exams. He examined me and he found that I, I had a lump, which he wasn't. So anyways, uh, got to um, the doctor. He did the examination. He did a sonar. He did a mammogram. And I could see on his face and his expression that he was not happy at all. Mm. And... Um, I saw some concern on his face and he asked me, can I do a biopsy for you? So I said, yes, no problem. You can do a biopsy for me. And he did the biopsy and he looked at me and he says, Mrs. Reddy, I'm not happy with what I'm seeing. And uh, I said, okay, what now? So he says, okay, let's send 
uh, this to um, for testing to the laboratory and we'll take it from there. I opted to the laboratory and then waited for the results. The results came within a few days and um, I was at work. I can remember very well what a painful day it was. Uh, he called me and he says, Mrs. Reddy, I need to speak to your doctor. So I said, uh, no, you're not speaking to my doctor. So he says, no, I have to, it's unethical for me to give you your results over the phone. So I said, please, I have not come with recommendation from any doctor to you and I'd like to have my results because I came to you personally. So he says, okay, please go and sit down and relax so we can chat. So I said, okay, I'm relaxed, but I wasn't actually relaxed. I was actually standing up. <laughs> And uh, he says, uh, Mrs. Reddy, you uh, have some bad news. You have um, vivacious carcinoma on your left breast. Uh, can you please come and see me straight away? So I, I was very shocked. I couldn't digest what I was hearing. Um, just to process what I was hearing was so difficult. My head was all over the show. And um, I ran out of my office and I went to my manager and I started crying and telling her, this is the story. Um, I've just been diagnosed with cancer, with a vivacious um, carcinoma. And um, I don't know what to do, what do I do? And they told me, okay, go back to the doctor, go and get your results, go home, go relax and we'll take it from there the next day. So I said, okay. And while driving from work to uh, the doctor, it was daunting. It was excruciating. I could not concentrate. I didn't know where I was driving to. Uh, eventually I got to the doctor, he gave me the results and he told me, I need to go and see a breast cancer specialist who is Professor Ben, Carol Ben. I got home, I did not tell anybody about the results, like my family members. I drove straight to the Cancer Association in Indonesia where I live. And um, I went to the lady and I told her, this is the story and can you please tell me what to do? And she told me, well, your hair is going to fall out. You're going to have the red devil chemotherapy, which is, absolutely toxic to your body, body and you're not going to feel well all the time but you will feel better after your treatments are over and I didn't want to listen to all the things I just it was too much I came home I lied on a bed and cried and cried and cried and my husband came home that evening and he's asking me why are you lying on the bed are you okay and I explained him no this is the story, I have cancer. And I felt like it was a death sentence immediately. Um, I was so scared, I was so confused, I was so nervous. I didn't know whether I was coming or going and all I thought was get my affairs in order because I'm going to die. That's what I thought, I'm gonna die and it's gonna happen soon because Pervacious carcinoma is a cancer that spreads fast and it grows fast. So this is all I was thinking that it's gonna kill me, I'm gonna die. And I uh, went to work the next day and started getting my affairs back in order. And um, two days later, I had an appointment with uh, Professor Carol Ben in Mill Park Hospital. And then she looked at my results and she asked me to please go for an MRI because she needs to determine if there is more cancer in the body. And uh, yes, indeed, uh, there was. Um, the MRI re uh, results was that I had uh, cancer in the right breast, which was called a lobular. And I had cancer in the lymph nodes, which is underneath the arms. And uh, the, the lobular cancer could have been there for 10 years. That's what you are saying. It could have been the slow growing cancer. And um, 
So I had to go for more biopsies and they had to put in uh, titanium markers to show where the cancer is. From there, the treatment started immediately. I had to go and remove my lymph nodes, which was the first operation. After removing the lymph nodes, I had to go in for a port, a medical port. So this is where they would um, give the chemo, uh, administer chemo from the port. Uh, that have all in all was in 2019. I continued doing the red devil. The first red devil after uh, two weeks, I started losing my hair, my eyebrows, my eyelashes, hair everywhere. All my hair just came off. I looked like something, somebody that came out of a horror movie, I would say. <laughs> Today I can sit back and look and laugh because we used to we used to choke around because my husband also don't have hair on his head. So the two of us used to laugh and say, Oh, you know, I wish there's a horror movie where we can go in and take part in. <laughs> so after the red devil. I had a few cycles of red devil. I had uh, surgery, which was a double mastectomy, which I think it was on the 23rd of July last year. And uh, they removed both my breast. They put in silicone implants. And uh, because there was no uh, fatty tissue to, um, use from any parts of my other, my body because I've lost a lot of weight. I'm very skinny right now. I had uh, the double mastectomy and uh, did 36 cycles of radiation. After radiation, I continued with uh, Herceptin until April 2021 this year. And since April, I've been in remission. Um, it's another journey altogether in remission because now you uh, you don't know how to step back into society. You don't know what to expect. You feel like you've been in prison for two, three years, you know, and now you need to get back into society. You need to get back into work and you are so afraid of stepping there because you don't know how people are going to embrace you. Um, it is, it's a very tough journey. You might have 200 people that has been supporting you and everybody falls along the way and you end up with five people that's always been there for you through your journey. I have a very supportive family. I must be honest to you. My kids and my husband has been there through my entire journey. They haven't left my home for all the time. Um, I used to cry a lot. Um, it used to make, you know, that I could not talk. Every time somebody asked me, how are you feeling? I used to just cry <laughs> because it's a very emotional thing. It, it, it's mind blowing because your life, you have plans for your life. You have plans for your future. And all of a sudden, everything comes to a halt. And uh, now you don't know what to do because I'm a mother, I'm a wife, I'm running my home and all of a sudden I cannot do all those things anymore. I cannot go to the shop. I could not, and COVID didn't help either because we were restricted from even going to public places. When I had my operation, my family had to leave me at the door of the hospital and I had to walk in myself. And as they came to fetch me after my operation, the same story. So they couldn't even visit me in hospital. And it was a very, very difficult time during being in hospital during COVID because she was so afraid of getting COVID, number one. The, the treatment and uh, the service was limited. So if you had to ask for a cup of coffee, you would get a glass of water instead of the coffee. So because people were afraid to actually help you because they were afraid of themselves as well. Um, it's been very hard, even financially, uh, cancer is 
I don't know how to say it, but you know, when you have no money and you're very poor, you don't get the best service. You have to wait for a very long time for your healing period to even take place. So, and when you go privately, your, your medical aid gets finished quickly because they are using your, I mean, uh, chemotherapy is very expensive. Uh, radiation is very expensive. Besides all that, there's still medication that you continue taking. Um, you end up in hospital because sometimes of the side effects that's there. Um, the side effects are really, really bad. So I have to now take a tablet called tamoxifen which is a hormone blocker and uh, it has comes with its own challenges. Also, it also has a lot of side effects, but um, yeah, it's got a lot of side uh, challenges dealing with this tablet. But um, yeah, so far it's not been so bad. I've been coping. Uh, I've just been having a lot of um, swelling of the legs because the lymph nodes take longer to drain now. And you have to learn how to drain your lymph nodes. And nobody tells you what to expect after chemo. Nobody tells you what to do, how you're going to get back into society. Um, I had a meltdown, a mental meltdown in April because you know, you, 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 the chemo was keeping the cancer at bay. And now there's no more chemo. So what now? Where do I go from here? Yeah, it's been very hard, but um, I must say my faith has grown very strong. I'm Christian. My faith has grown very, very strong. Um, I've also come from a family that has a cancer background. I lost a brother last year from cancer. He had, um, first he had colon cancer and rectum and he was in remission for five years and then it returned uh, lung cancer last year. And in August last year, he passed on. Uh, my mom also had uh, cervic cancer of the cervix, but she did not uh, pass from that because um, her organs started shutting down eventually because she had a stroke and she passed on. So this is the history of our family. I'm very afraid for my kids. I've been like constantly telling them that they need to do a BRCA test. Uh, but people are telling me, please do not let your kids do the BRCA test. Let them live a full life. Don't let them worry about cancer. Uh, when it comes to that day, they will deal with it. It might not come. Um, I'm also afraid of reoccurrence. I'm uh, in remission, but uh, I have all my um, tests next week, Friday. And these tests will find, give me the final results of uh, my remission. And um, yeah, I don't know where else to go from here because yeah. very difficult yeah. journey. Hmm. So like, what do people need to expect when they get this cancer type? So when people uh, get uh, breast cancer, when they are, are diagnosed with breast cancer, the first thing they got to realize is to be, to accept your diagnosis. Uh, we can't question God because we all ask, why God? Why me? But then why not you? What is so special about you? God gives us sometimes these mountains to climb because he knows our strength. So I say the most important thing is acceptance of your diagnosis and be positive, very important to be positive and make sure you have a good support structure. structure. And if you don't have it, there are people on social media, there are support groups everywhere. You just have to look for them. There are a lot of support groups there are a lot of caregivers that are out there hoping to help somebody along their journey. I, I had a few people uh, that were breast cancer patients and they were always giving me good advice. 
and they always told me to be strong and to keep thinking and looking at there is a light at the end of the tunnel. So it's not the end of the world when you get diagnosed. It's not the end of the world. I am uh, telling you a story of victory because you can survive it, you will survive it, and you'll be stronger than ever when you come back. Your, your outlook towards life will be different. You will look different. I look different. Uh, I, I, I sound different. My voice is different. I uh, feel different inside. And um, I appreciate everything around me. I appreciate nature, a lot of stuff that we've taken for granted. Uh, I appreciate the plants and the beautiful weather and everything that God has created. So that is my victory story. And I want to say people must not, you know, it is a very scary thing when you get diagnosed. But very importantly, if you have somebody with you to walk your journey, that's the most important thing that's going to help you through. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. um, it's it's easier when you when you're done with the diagnosis to tell somebody, be positive. But mm -hmm. when you're in that that frame of mind and you're still on your journey and you're still getting your treatment, it's very hard to 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 continuously having that positive mind, but you have to force yourself. And if you have people around you telling you constantly, you've made it. You are good. Look at that today. You had your chemo and you've done very well. So you need that positive push from everybody. And that's important. Mm. So like, did you make any lifestyle changes during after the treatment? Yes. So lifestyle changes is, uh, I can't eat a lot of meat anymore. Because uh, so, we used to eat meat, fish, chicken, everything. And uh, that my diet has changed drastically. Uh, I don't eat a lot of uh, sweet like I used to because, uh, you know, being Indian, we eat a lot of desserts and sweets. And uh, I had to not even intentionally cut down, but it just happened that I, no, I can't have any more of this because I started feeling very uh, sick, nauseous. Uh, my liver is uh, also very sensitive, so I can't have a lot of strong uh, foods, a lot of spicy foods, and cappuccino, my favorite, but I can't have it because my, my liver cannot handle it anymore. It's very weak. So lifestyle changes in that sense, yes. Uh, wardrobe changes because I've lost so much of weight. I had to uh, go to a biokinetics now to help me uh, regain my strength because the muscles in my body has collapsed after chemo. So I had to have to start like a little child, start doing exercises and gain strength, gain momentum. <laughs> I would rather mm. say that way, yeah. So like what all things helped you in your recovery? A lot of stuff have. So I used to listen to a lot of music. I used to love listening to music. Um, my positive mind also, I think that was one, when I changed my thinking, when I stopped feeling sorry for myself and I start changing my thinking. And I, when I went on social media and I realized, you know what, I'm not, my, my journey is not as bad as other people. There is somebody out there that is worse than you. And when I started helping one person on social media just to give them advice that helped me with my journey and even though I was doing chemo I could tell the next person listen I've just had chemo and I'm feeling good today tomorrow might not be a good day but it's okay because I know how to deal with it so I I, I know that if I do get uh, bring up or eat certain foods it's going to come up so I used to stay away from certain foods and eat a lot of dry foods. Um, yeah, so naturally, 
the 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 food that was really life changing is the the food because we love food it's a celebration <laughs> and uh, yeah so um I'm really trying, it's trial and error right now, you know? So sometimes I'll eat a nice curry and then tomorrow, no, 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 I can't have that anymore. So I have to try something else. So mm. um, life changing, yes, everybody's life changes. It's gonna be, sometimes it's drastic, sometimes not as drastic, but uh, yeah, your life will mm. change. You'll never ever be the same person ever again. Hmm. So every yeah, crisis but... in life teaches you a particular lesson. So what Absolutely. life lessons has this cancer journey taught you? This journey has taught me how to appreciate people. It also taught me who is your true family and friends. Uh, it also taught me how to deal with trauma. How to accept it and how to move on, um, how to use the negative and turn it into a positive. So right now I have signed up for a volunteer program which is called Reach for Recovery. Uh, it's, a, it's a South African uh, volunteer program where you can become a volunteer for cancer patients, helping them along their journey. And I feel that is so fulfilling just to help one more person. And uh, my focus is more on kids. I, I'd love to help younger uh, children. Um, I have a passion for that. And before this, before my cancer diagnosis, I used to do a lot of uh, charity work. Uh, also uh, counseling HIV patients. And uh, we, of, we had also taken a lot of patients under our wing, uh, the organization that I used to belong to. Uh, I moved away from that once I was diagnosed and then COVID kicked in. So naturally we could not meet people face to face. And uh, most of these people came from the informal settlements. So it was very difficult to even communicate to them via social network because they don't have it. So yes, I appreciate life. It's taught me great lessons. It's taught me about um, how to change your life and how to become more healthy, eat healthy, do more exercise and stress less, stress less, which is very hard. Um, I think most of us stress, even if we don't understand that we are stressing, if you just sit and you have to think about something, naturally your blood pressure starts rising and it causes stress. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I suppose that's my life lessons that I have learned from my journey. Um, it's been a tough journey, but uh, I'm here and I'm alive. I'm kicking and my heart is beating. So, and I appreciate life. I wake up every morning saying, thank you, Lord, that I'm still alive and I can still see my family. I can see my, my colleagues at work. I have returned back to work. I'm doing like three times a week only because my energy levels is about 70% right now if we have to calculate it. So um, by next year, I'll go full time, but I just needed to get back there. So it's also helps me seeing people that I'm not cooped up in my home, in my bedroom and all day uh, in the house, you know, and alone. At least I'm seeing people, I'm interacting. And when people ask me, where have you been all this time? I start telling them about my journey because before, uh, I, you know, many, many years ago, cancer was such a taboo subject to talk, especially in our Indian community in, in South Africa. Uh, people, when you were diagnosed with cancer, they used to say, hush, hush, don't talk about it. Don't tell the neighbors, don't tell anybody. But I see that community has changed and people's mindset has changed. And now people are opening up. People are talking more about 
the illnesses. They are not shy anymore. I just feel there's a complete loss of generation between the age of 17 and 35 in South Africa where there is people, there's no support for that age group. Mm -hmm. I don't know um, what your experience, if you ever came across the lost generation that don't have much uh, support. Yeah, so like gratitude seems to the biggest trend to fight the situation. So what were you ever so grateful for that made you always calm down after thinking or revisiting that memory? Yeah, so gratitude, very important. But I think it was my faith. I kept on saying faith like a mustard seed. That's all you need. I needed. I kept on saying to myself, just have faith. Just one more day to go. Kept on saying that because you know, when you experience these seizures, when you have chemo, because I experienced a few seizures and it's sort of near death experience. And when you recover from that near death experience mm. and you are alive, you are, wow, I've, I've came from that thing that almost killed me and I'm loving and uh, I wanna love tomorrow. And when I wake up in the morning, when I go to sleep, I'm always saying, Lord, please, I want to be there tomorrow. I want to wake up in this bed tomorrow. And um, that's most important. I think it's my faith that makes me get up every day. And obviously, the blessings from God. That's the most yeah. important. Because if it wasn't yeah. from, if it wasn't God, I would not have been here. Because God has really, really pulled me through this yes hmm. so uh, do you still go for prescribed checkups after the treatment yes so i have one more prescribed treatment which is next week friday uh, this is for the sauna uh, they don't do really a proper mammogram because i have uh, implants so um, i'm not sure how they're going to do this I'm um, mm. also a bit nervous because I'm like, oh, because you can't put the implants into the mammogram machine. So I suppose they know how to work around that. So I have my full blood count that I have to do next week. I have uh, the, the sauna and the mammo. And then on Friday, next Friday, I go to see my um, oncologist. Uh, what the results, of course, yes. Um, Sometimes it's a bit nervous, nerve wracking. Uh, you know, most people say it's called, um, it's called a scan city scan. <laughs> so you're nervous because you're worried what is it going to be. But to be honest, I've been very positive. I kept on saying it to myself that there is no more cancer. I kept on saying that um, if I do have to happen to have a recurrence, I must be honest to you, I will look for alternative medication. Uh, uh, or I would go the alternative natural way. And right now with my healing process, I also, I'm also trying to do more natural stuff uh, using um, natural products, uh, trying to do uh, little meditation, and some yoga um, and uh, because of the brain fog that we battle with this is something that you might have for a long time um, very difficult to train your brain to get rid of the fog it takes a long time to actually go away so wherever you are you got to make a lot of mental notes or physical notes everywhere so you can remember stuff because you can walk from your lounge to the bedroom and you completely forgot what you needed mm -hmm. so that's the the next challenge that you sit with after as you're recovering it's things that you have to deal with you have to learn to wear high heels again or makeup or learn how to draw eyebrows because that was gone. <laughs> uh, 
um, you have to get cane strength and learn how to even hold an electric kettle because you don't have the energy. So you're literally holding a kettle with all your might and trying to put anything you hold, you're holding it with two hands because you're so afraid everything falls out of your hands from the weakness, you know? Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, uh, I think it's uh, every three months uh, that I have to go to him and then from there it'll progress to every six months. Mm. So what would be your message to other cancer patients and caregivers? My message to every cancer patient, it's not the end of the world. There is hope out there. There is life out there. You got to deep, dig deep down inside you and find that life that you have. Try to go back to how you were. A try even. You know you were a happy person before. You don't allow depression to take over you. Even though you will feel that there's days that you will be down, but you won't be down forever. Today you're down, but tomorrow you might be up. So one day at a time, most importantly, one day at a time, one step forward is, a, is more important than anything else. If you can take one step forward, that's yeah. already progress. Mm. What do you think are the stigmas attached to cancer and the importance of awareness for it? There is a stigma. So I'm known as Denise with cancer. When people look at me or introduce me, oh, by the way, do you know this is Denise, the lady I spoke to you about that had cancer. So yes, naturally there's a stigma and I think that stigma will be with you for the rest of your life. You have to learn to live with it. Uh, I'm not afraid of it. I'm not shy about it. I'm fine. It's okay because I'm ready to help anybody out there that's lost. Anybody that's there that has problems, uh, that don't know how to cope. I want to help you. I want to be there for you. I want to walk your journey with you, beside you, holding your hands. You are not alone. We can do this together. Nobody mm. needs to go through this journey alone. Nobody. Mm. So if you have to sum up your journey in one sentence, then what would that be? My journey was... Um, Sure. Just to have faith. I think that's the most important thing. Mm. Have faith. Yes. You know, no matter what, don't lose hope. Don't lose your faith. Because the faith, that little faith that you have is something that's going to pull you through. Mm. Just that little faith. And that's the most important thing. Um, faith like a mustard seed. Yeah. So and Zen take Onco the leap of faith. <laughs> yeah. So zenonco.io, we work towards the betterment of cancer patients through integrative oncology approach. So what are your thoughts on the same? I, I'm very uh, excited. I want to help other patients. And if whatever patients, if they choose oncology on alternative, I'm there to assist. I don't know much about alternative medication. I'm also learning, but oncology has helped me. Uh, if I did, I was in stage three. This is what the doctor told me. And um, my rib cage inside had cancer as well. And um, I could have died in one evening, just maybe went to sleep and never ever got up because I just feel that, you know, God has, has pulled me through this, but the, the, the treatment helped me as well. The mm. treatment really helped me. 
I, 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 you know, it was hard to take the treatment, even though you feel like it's all this poison going into your body and then you're going to get sick. But in your back of your mind, you know that it's working. It's helping something. It's killing the cancer. And, and that's what happened to me in April when I stopped doing chemo and I realized, what now? How do you move forward? I, I'm not having chemo. So, and I know chemo was keeping the cancer at bay. And now what, you know? And nobody's got the answers for you to believe me. Nobody's got that answer. You have to navigate your life slowly. And um, cancer teaches you to have a lot of patience. Yes. Yeah, you got to have a lot of patience. Uh, if you're in a fast lane, you're going to have to stop. You're going to have to stop and realize, listen, it's me. It's all about me right now. Uh, my, 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 my life used to always be surrounded by family and kids. And I give, gave them my all. And uh, I used to walk into the shop before I could buy me a dress. I would look at it and that's, it look beautiful, my daughter. So uh, as a parent, um, you are so afraid of being a selfish person. You are so afraid of only thinking about yourself. But this journey has taught me you forgot about yourself along, along your way. You forget yourself. This journey told me, now it's time to take care of yourself. Now it's a time to be selfish. It's okay. But be selfish because you are healing. And everything is about you right now. And I'm on the journey of healing. And uh, I feel that um, my healing comes from helping somebody else as well. Uh, when I speak to people, I feel like, wow, I, I've made a difference in that person's life. But I feel that so good that, wow, I feel like some part of my body has healed already, you know? So that's a positive thing that I want to say, you know, continue wanting to love. Look at your family around you. Look at your kids around you. Look at your friends, your husband, and say, you know what? I want to see that child grow up. I want to see my grandchild grow up. I'm going to fight till the end to stay alive so I could hold my grandson in my hands. And that's what I did. And it worked wonderful. <laughs> yeah. So thank you so much for your valuable time, Dennis. And I hope this session really motivates people out there who are traveling or who have traveled through this journey. So it was lovely having you here today on this session with us. Thank you so much, Dumpal. Thank you so much for allowing me and giving me this opportunity. I really, really appreciate it. And thank you and God bless you as well. Yes, thank you.